Right, good morning everyone uh, and welcome to the second interview I've done. This one with uh, Gavin Ward who is a legal blogger and social media advisor for law firms in Scotland and uh, around the world I guess. Um, but welcome Gavin, how, how are things going with you? Yeah, thanks for the, the invite Jonathan, uh, pleased to be here. Uh, yeah, things going things going very well, thanks. Um, uh, just very busy with with various projects just now, uh, and certainly an interesting time for the for the legal market. Good, good. Yeah. So, um, oh, there's various things I'd like to talk talk to you about, but we've followed each other on Twitter for a while, and mm. I first came across you when I think you were still practicing law, or you just left and you were doing a bit of tutoring at. at um, a law school university in Scotland and you were, you were just yes. about to transition sort of doing your own thing and leaving mm. the legal world behind? Yes, I think that's right. Um, how, did, how did that come around? How did you make the decision to um, stop uh, becoming a uh, or, or end your career as a, as a lawyer as such and, and go into the, the world of technology and, and social media instead? Uh, well, in, in terms of my background, I was a, a trainee solicitor at McLemore in Spence, um, at that point one of the the big four uh, law firms in Scotland, uh, certainly one of the, the, the finest law firms in Scotland. Um, and in terms of the areas that, that I was practicing at that point, IP and technology, commercial litigation and uh, capital pro projects were the, were the main areas. Uh, and I suppose just being in the firm um, for maybe about a year, year and a half, I, Got the impression that there was a, a big gap in legal blogging um, and in terms of social media developing business online for lawyers. Uh, and at that point, after work, I'd say leave the law firm at seven or eight o'clock at night. Uh, I'd head off uh, home and start blogging till twelve or one in the morning. And I, I got the impression that if I'm if I'm getting really into it like that, I might as well do as a career uh, and at the same time it was becoming certainly a, a more challenging marketplace um, in my year I think around around half of, of all trainees weren't kept on in the firm so sort of a, a natural natural progression um, and, and from there um, I joined a, a legal IT firm called Lawware uh, whose main product is Law Cloud, cloud computing for lawyers okay. um, and also at that point, when I was freelance, I was working with Stephen Moore from Moore Legal Technology, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I mean, we, we definitely saw some massive gar gaps in the market. A lot of law firms just not getting their website right, not getting any of their social media stuff right, um, and certainly, are you even blogs? Um, and it was just good to help out in that respect. Mm -hmm. so what's what's your role at more more legal technology now? Uh, so I'm really technology. Uh, I was previously an SEO and social media marketing manager. Um, mm -hmm. I'm now the operations director. Uh, so heading up operations, make sure that an excellent client, uh, an excellent service is provided for our clients. Mm -hmm. uh, so working alongside Stephen Moore, uh, he followed a similar career path to me, having been a lawyer. He was at a large law firm in Scotland called Digby Brown. Okay. Uh, and he came out of that and started getting into the online space as well. Uh, I mean, his, his, his main website is called Case Check, uh, for instance. Uh, and with my websites, I've set up various blogs uh, yeah. that you've probably come across. Yeah, go, go on to that in a minute, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what, what, did, you, did you first get involved more advising on uh, traditional SEO techniques, or, or is more of, has more of your job um, before you became operations director anyway, mm. uh, advising law firms on their use of social media and the, the nuances of using different platforms and how to communicate online? Yeah, it's a bit of both. Um, in fact, it was probably probably better seen as a, a, a like a, an entire campaign focus so it's like all everything under the one roof it's not just SEO and social media although those are, are big components in it you need to get 
the design right for your website um, yeah. should, should be the, the hub of all activities uh, and then then using all other platforms to help in that respect um, so it's a bit of advising law firms and lawyers on their social media uh, activities blogging and writing uh, very high quality legal content uh, for our clients and helping them do that in a way that they'll get found online mm. um, and so those are the sort of main things they were involved with at that point. Sure, what, what's the sort of biggest, um, what are the biggest mistakes you see commonly made with the, uh, in, generally in the legal market, not necessarily the people you can consult with but mm. um, the things that you you commonly see the need fix that law firms are not doing quite quite right. Um, I think it's it is 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 probably the main mistake is just not getting the basics right. By basics, I mean getting your website done right. Um, just as an example, I had to review four law firm websites yesterday. Mm -hmm. One of them on the home page, their what's called the meta title, the bit that Google would display in their search results. Yeah. It said home, which is not a good start. Should I really say something more legal? Uh, so I think I think just getting the website right to start with, uh, and and then getting all your your other platforms and activities working for you. Uh, so say say in a law firm, they may have say one social media champion. Uh, it could be in that case. How do you get that person to help out with the overall strategy mm. instead of just Get on and sending a few uh, random tweets here and there, etc. Mm. Yeah, no, it's, no, it's tricky. Um, mm. what, what do you think is the some of the, the main mistakes that you see being made? Oh, I don't know. I mean, there's, it, the trouble is now there's just so much to it that, that it's difficult for lawyers and law firms to know quite what to, um, um, you know, where to start or what to focus on, rather. But mm. I, I think. Um, yeah, I think email marketing or email newsletters is still a big, uh, yeah, uh, you know, still obviously very important, but not many law firms do it, and a lot of them are now sort of focusing time on social media without ever having got a, mm. a, a engaging email newsletter going. Yeah, um, I would, I'd agree. Um, we actually work with it's not just law firms that we work with because our, our business model applies uh, across a, a range of sectors. We work with one of Scotland's uh, biggest tire. Companies and just an example, I've now got their email subscriber list up to about fifteen hundred uh, wow. people. Sending out a mail shot, for instance, to that list is uh, just as good, if not better, than than running some of the social media campaigns. Mm. Um, yeah, Gets them straight into the straight into the email inbox. Yeah, no, it's good, and it was sort of obviously linked with the blogs and the written content online as well. So yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. I guess the other the other thing that I I think or my experience of practicing in law firms or, mm -hmm. or just generally viewing the market is that still still firms put a lot of effort into building their um, corporate brand as such rather than really trying to encourage individual fee earners, not not the, not necessarily the people in the marketing department, but the owners who are going to be doing the work sort of build their own mm. profile online and get involved in, um, you know, well, LinkedIn, Twitter, or or start using it in a, in a, yeah. in a more useful way, I guess. Yeah, and absolutely, I, th I think you'd agree. Probably the personal brand is something that should be worked on just as much, if not more, than the than the corporate brand. Yeah. So, um, yeah, well, I, I I can see that changing now, but uh, God, it's. Uh, yeah, it's a different a different world seeing seeing all these law firms popping up on um, Twitter and now, whereas before um, you'd hear them say what a load of uh, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, it wasn't out for them, it wasn't relevant, and they you know wouldn't be using it anytime soon. So. Yeah, um, it's only you've done a great job yourself of carving out your own niche as uh, a corporate a, a corporate lawyer. Yeah, well, at least at least opportunities, but um, I guess like a lot of, lot of people on Twitter and yourself, you just do it for um, fun and interest, really, and it makes yeah. life, life a little bit more uh, a little bit more different. And then you never quite well, like in the real world as well, you never quite know where 
particularly as a lawyer, where the next opportunity is going to come from. But yeah, absolutely. You got to keep got to keep working on the on the pipeline, as it yeah. were. You got to keep. Uh, you can't just can't just stop all business development activities. Yeah. No. And even people who aren't really who don't really um who aren't really active on online themselves, they still um for example, like I I post stuff on my LinkedIn profile and people will still follow that and I'll bump into them a year later and they'll say, oh yeah, I've been following your posts, but they haven't really mm. ever interacted with me and then they might get in touch about you know, a certain bit of work or something. So Yeah, absolutely. That's, and it's great when that happens. Um, it's the same on, on mine, I think. Um, uh, when we were at one of the legal tweet-ups, I think you were there as well, Jonathan, last year, um, I think it was Ajit uh, who had uh, who'd recommended me on LinkedIn and uh, it's, it's good for for both him and me with the recommendation there, for instance. Yeah. Um, there's another example. I mean, just even from my own uh, from my own services as an SEO consultant, um, there was a a, a recent there was a, a personal injury lawyer over in uh, Toronto mm. had just got in touch directly because I had SEO listed as a skill and then various other relevant keywords to do with law. Um, so it's great that that kind of stuff can happen, and it works just the same for for lawyers if they've got the right skills and services listed. Mm. Yeah, no, exactly. No, I find LinkedIn more and more useful. Um, mm. Yeah, particularly sort of people as using it as a search engine, and they're looking for particular people. And yeah, you've got if you get mm. your keywords right, then um, you know the right people will find you. Yeah. Um, well, seeing as you've been a tutor at um, at Glasgow University and, and other places, I see as yes. well. Yeah, um, Strathclyde University as well. Yeah, and, and what what would be your? Uh, do, you, do you still do that anymore? Or uh, no, unfortunately, I don't. Um, it got to the point last year where uh, I was doing that for about five hours every Monday, and there would just be a, a backlog of mm. many many emails and tasks to be dealt with. Uh, both with Merlego Technology and own blogs, uh, so it, it was probably the right decision to uh, to, to stop doing that, uh, mm. and even stop doing private tutoring as well. Okay, uh, but given your given your knowledge of um, the student scene and people studying mm. law, as well as being into technology, what would be your advice to current law students looking at the profession um, now and, and the yeah. jobs market? Uh, well, actually, I went back to Glasgow University. It was a few months ago, and I went back and lectured uh, for maybe 10, 20 minutes on this subject. And the advice that I would give to any law students uh, or trainees or anyone looking to develop a legal career is work on your own personal brand through through social media and blogs. Uh, so mainly LinkedIn and Twitter, uh, and really try to to carve out a a niche for yourself, um, just in, my, my, in terms of my, my own experience of doing it. The more uh, the more great legal content you write, and the more you interact with the, the legal profession, mm. the better, and the more possibilities uh, that arise. Um, mm. I mean, I ended up getting offered a couple of jobs after I'd left the legal profession uh, just because of of my legal blogging. Mm. Um, and I think that that point about legal writing also comes back to to what Adrian Dayton had said in your, uh, in, your in, in your first interview with him. He was he was I'm talking what? about the yeah he was talking about the, the value <laughs> of of legal writing, particularly if you're carving out a, a good specialism. Mm. Um, I think he was talking about hyper specialization yeah uh, as well. And if if you can do that. Um, I mean, you can get recognised worldwide mm. for that specialism, um, and so yeah, it can, it can lead to some great opportunities. Opportunities that wouldn't have existed, say, even ten or twenty years ago. Mm. Yeah, well, blogging still key, I guess. People, it's so easy to spend, you know, too much time, I guess, on Twitter or LinkedIn or all, all, all the rest of it, where you're not mm. really doing anything active. But yeah, publishing mm. content and doing a regular blog seems to work for everyone really but so so few people in the grand scheme of things really commit to the time and the energy yeah. to, to do it on such a regular basis. Yeah exactly and you just really have to, to build it into the day um, or night as it were uh, <laughs> but just, yeah and um, so in terms of in terms of uh, legal blogging 
um, I, I, I compared to say Twitter or LinkedIn, etc. With with Twitter, 140 characters per tweet, uh, it certainly does have its place. Um, uh, there there are many advantages to to focusing mainly on Twitter. Just an example, David Morgan um, from Burness. I don't know if you saw his recent UK employment tips uh, or employment law tips uh, book. Okay. Uh, he he tweeted 140 employment law tips. Okay. Uh, so it was 140 employment law tips in 140 characters, mm. uh, and published an offline version of it as well. Uh, mm. So that was a great example of that. But where where blogging really stands out is that, um, and, and lawyers are great writers. It's about going beyond the 140 characters. It's actually about putting in place thoughts and ideas, useful legal information. Mm. But otherwise isn't available online and a lot of law firms and lawyers have this knowledge these legal precedents mm. uh, legal information that's that's hidden um, mm. and the only way to move forward really to get it shared yeah so you're saying my uh, my whole database records of all my um, you know pretty unique drafting that I've come up with over the years and, and stored that that you know isn't it wouldn't be subject to copyright infringement, I don't think. Mm. I should just like publish all that on my website and uh, see what happens. Uh, well, I think I think there's a, there's certainly a limit because at the end of the day, we're all we're out there to make money and to to generate yeah. business. Um, but I, I do think there is there's a lot more that can be shared without giving it all away. Yeah. Uh, well, I sometimes um, think I sometimes think well, uh, uh, me is I'm just a one man band, so it's time that time it would take for me just to chuck it all on, online but I sometimes think well you know life is short why don't I just sort it and just put it all on online and see what happens um, it was, I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting one I, I, I had experimented with this uh, a couple of years ago when I published my dissertation online uh, first of all I published it behind a paywall I don't think it was my objective is really to share the useful information so I ended up publishing it for free and I ranked first in Google for law dissertation as a result. Um, I think it certainly drives a lot of traffic as well. I think that um, paywalls certainly have their place and lawyers and law firms aren't going are, they are to not, not share or, or keep innovating and uh, producing more useful stuff if everything's for free. Uh, so I think that uh, certainly the, the paywall approach uh, is a good one. Uh, it was interesting. Uh, speaking to Graham Ling yesterday on Twitter, because uh, he had, had referred to this as going to be on demand, uh, and he said, "Why don't we just maybe maybe you'll put it behind a paywall at some point?" Okay. Uh, and uh, you would suggested about the PayPal donation point. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I think that's a long way off before people are going to be that interested. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's only people who manage to, it's kind of like established brands already, like uh, Financial Times, mm. um, who have a successful subscription model. But, but yeah, yeah, I guess the technology improves and it becomes more available at the consumer level. So, um, yeah. you know, if it's a micro payment as such, then if people may be prepared to, you know, pay that if it's a popular blog that they like reading. Yeah, absolutely. And it encourages great content. Um, if everything's kept free, it is, it's, it, yeah, it is difficult to keep the, the high the high standards up there. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think the the Times um, and the FT, etc. I think they they are doing a, a good job in their own way. Uh, but yeah, some there should there still should be a lot of stuff available mm -hmm. for free. Okay, well, well, finally, let's um, talk about your own. Um, Blogging interests, I guess. I, yeah. Can I call them businesses? I'm talking about, I'm talking specifically about you blog and um, mm. and the war blog as well. Yes. Um, so in terms of those, I set them up as well as a, a trainee solicitor. I'd set them up, and mm. it's really with the objective to get other law firms and lawyers uh, and law students as well to get their own to get their own names out there. At that point, what I was seeing was there's a lot of perhaps junior lawyers who weren't really managing to get their own personal brands developed because 
quite a lot of the content was going out in partners' names, or perhaps um, they just they just weren't they, they just weren't getting their place in in legal magazines and legal publications. Mm. Um, and so it was to try to to help them to get to get shared a bit more. I've published a few legal dissertations last week, for instance, uh, for a couple of law students to get them uh, out there a bit more. Um, but but overall, the the blogs are doing well. Um, you blog is the the main business now from that point of view. It includes things like family blog, property blog, labour blog, um, mm. commercial blog, etc. Um, and the the idea is really to to develop these these niche areas, share useful legal information, uh, and really help both consumers and people interested in those subjects to find what they're looking for. Mm. What, what, is there a revenue model to it? Sorry, can you say that again, John? Is there a revenue model to you, Blog? Uh, yes, there is. I mean, there, there are certainly ways to, to make money with blogging, um, and or, or, for, or for that matter, for any legal publication or online publication. Uh, so, for instance, there are certainly opportunities for, for law firms and uh, lawyers to advertise. Um, Say in the sidebar, um, there's there's ways for uh, for um, for solicitors to get in touch if anyone's got any questions. Um, so there are uh, dozens of inquiries from people looking for uh, looking for legal information, looking to connect with a lawyer, asking me for recommendations, um, and yeah, happy to help out. And it's one way of doing it. Mm. Do you, um, how, how do you find the advertisers? Do they is that people who just contact you, or do you sort of cherry pick or pick, choose people you think would be a good fit for the the website? Yeah, no, I have to cherry pick. I mean, there's Mindbox is it's going a bit daft at the moment. I think I get about 100 emails a day into the the legal blogging one. Wow. Um, but sometimes you get people like uh, I mean, it's a good tip for any other legal bloggers out there. If you see anything that says casino gambling. Or anything like that, just avoid it. <laughs> yeah. uh, but if there's if there's useful, uh, if there's relevant law firms, happy to to promote them. Mm. And uh, do you, are you able to disclose sort of what the the traffic is like that you get to um, to the website? Uh, yeah, I think in, t in terms of in terms of traffic, traffic's not too important. Um, yeah. But it is great to see it developing um, at the moment. The blogs get about forty thousand hits a month, um, mm. wow. which is good. But obviously, we've got bigger goals. Mm. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a good indication of of how how well people are finding yeah uh, the information. And presumably, that still comes through Google. Really, people are you know still the primary driver is. A, I yeah, guess. I think that's the, that's certainly the pri primary driver. Uh, in terms of social media accounts, I mean, in terms of Twitter, we've got about sixty thousand followers. Mm. That helps, mm. um, and yeah, so, so Google's the main one. I think if any if any other legal bloggers are out there looking to get more traffic, get onto things, certainly use LinkedIn more. LinkedIn groups, stumble upon can be uh, unbelievably useful mm -hmm. uh, on occasion, if particularly for your longer articles. Um, mm. That search engines might not pick up on too well. Hmm. What about Reddit? Is that something you used? Yeah, yeah. I think I've been on everything. Uh, <laughs> I think Reddit's certainly got its place as well. Yeah. I don't use it too much, um, but look. At, I mean, going onto the homepage on Reddit now and then, some some great posts there that you wouldn't find mm. elsewhere. Mm. Okay. Well, we we better better wrap it up there. But um, yeah. thanks very much for uh, for chatting, Gavin, and um, hope to catch up with you soon. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jonathan. If anyone's out there looking to connect, uh, please do get in touch on LinkedIn or Twitter. Uh, and might see you in, in London. Are you going to reinvent Law London, Jonathan? Yeah, no, I'll be there, fingers crossed. That's Great. next week, I think. Or so. yeah. yeah, yeah, 14 June. I should hopefully see you there then. Okay, brilliant. Thanks a lot, Jonathan. Okay, okay cheers. Bye. Bye.